Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. This video is going to be an interesting one. So we are going to be going to the Dollar Tree and we are going to be making a Dollar Tree dinner. I got this idea because of this lady on TikTok. Her at is Dollar Tree Dinners and she posts Dollar Tree inspired dinners. But I thought I would come up with a twist. So if you've seen in my previous video of Eat This, Not That, you know by now that I'm kind of health, I'm kind of a health freak, okay? I check my ingredients, I need to know what is in my food when I am consuming it. So as a result, I thought this video would be fun because I am going to actually challenge myself and I will be making a Dollar Tree dinner but healthy. So a part of this, we're also going to make sure that it tastes good because the taste is important. Just because it's healthy doesn't mean it has to taste bad. So the boys today and I will be meeting up at the studio. And usually when we have studio days, I do make dinner for them. So today I'm going to try out and making a Dollar Tree dinner and I'm going to go shopping right now, bring you guys along with me and we're going to see if the boys think the food is good. I will not be telling them it's from the dollar store. I will just be like, hey, what do you guys think of this dinner? Is it good? Do you guys like it? I'm excited to see how it goes. I have no idea what I'm going to cook. I have zero ideas whatsoever. I'm going to go into it blind. I'm going to see what the Dollar Tree has for food, for dinner, stuff that is healthy, healthy alternatives. We're just gonna see what's up. So let's go. Look at this, a year of date nights, 52 date night ideas. One of them is a beach day. Honestly, this is so cute. I wanna see more examples, but honestly for a dollar coro, that's super cute. Honestly, I'm here for this. Okay, the dollar store has Beyond Meat jerky, like plant-based jerky, with an array of like all these other jerkies, but that's so cool that they have literally a Beyond Meat jerky. Go off. Okay, so far the dollar store is actually really impressive because they have so many things that you could get and so many things that you could make. For this meal, I'm doing like a simple meal. So stuff that's already ready, but I want to see if it's good for you. But let me show you guys what I got so far. I got this bag that says love and then the date nights thing because I'm really interested. And I got these black beans and then I got this spanish rice and i think this will be really good together now the question is do i want this separate like a burrito bowl or do i want to make it into a burrito one thing that i do have to find though is like a protein with it right because you know we gotta gotta get some flavor in it i do like that they have like an array of mixed vegetables that you could totally get and make with any meal like this stir fry blend is so easy to just add into like your stir fry, maybe even your fajitas. I'm here for this one. And then they have corn, that's also delicious. So they got a lot. I found these at the dollar store and they're French style green beans. And you're probably thinking, huh, green bean casserole. But no, we are going to be making a Syrian stew. So this is called Rosal Sharbat Fasolia. And I'm gonna make that because I think it's such a super simple and easy meal, super cheap, and it'll taste amazing. So you can use either use French style green beans or you can use cut green beans. So either or work perfectly fine. I think I'm gonna go for this recipe. I think I'm gonna do French style. I'm gonna grab two cans of the French style. Now I know I said originally I was gonna make the beans mixed with the rice, which is a really good idea if that's what you wanna do. That's another great idea. So I'm gonna put these back because I don't want them anymore, but I think it's a great idea. And then also at the dollar store, they have this long grain white rice and it's super healthy. The dollar store also has this long grain enriched rice. So we're gonna go ahead and use this rice to make with our meal. Next for this dish, you're gonna need a can of tomato sauce. You only need a can, you don't need more than that. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and grab a can of tomato sauce. As you can see, it literally has all the ingredients that I want, nothing bad in it, so definitely copying this. Now for this recipe, all you're gonna need is paprika, salt, and pepper. That's literally it. So if you have paprika and you have salt and pepper, then you are all set for this recipe. I noticed in the frozen section, they also have cut okra, which is perfect for this recipe as well. All you would do is sub out the green beans for the okra. And the recipe is exactly the same. You can use okra, you can use zucchini, you can use whatever. But okra has an acquired taste to it because it is slimy once you cook it. So I will just be using the green beans. Super pleased with what I got, guys. I want to open up these date night ones. Oh, look at this one, guys. Cook a meal together. And that's what I will be doing with you guys. So it'll be a nice little date night for us. Okay, so we're gonna be making this meal together. Let me just quickly pull out and recap what we got. We got the Del Monte Harvest tomato sauce. We only need one can. And then we got French style green beans. We got two of these. And then we got a thing of rice. So with each of these items being only $8.25, this brings us to a grand total of five bucks. So this meal should feed about three, four, five people. I don't know. I don't really know how to say like this meal will feed this many people, but I'm gonna make this meal and it should feed about five people in my opinion. I'm gonna go ahead and make this dish and let me show you guys how this amazing Assyrian dish is made. Super healthy and good. First, we're gonna measure the rice. And so how I do it is one cup is gonna be for about three people. Because three grown adults will be eating this meal, I'm gonna do about a cup of rice. And if I want leftovers, then I would make a cup and a half. But I like my rice fresh, so I will be only making a cup of rice. Dump the rice into my strainer. Yes, we are washing the rice. And essentially, you're washing the rice until the water is clear. Once the water is clear, you are good to go. You see how the water in the sink is milky? We're gonna wait until it's clear. After a couple of minutes of watching, washing, as you can see, the water is clear and then the rice does get a little bit dry. For this rice, I'm using this pot and I am using avocado oil spray. I just kind of sprayed it to coat the bottom of the pan. You can use butter or you can use oil. It honestly doesn't matter. You just need it to kind of lightly toast and fry up the rice. So we're going to turn this on a very like low heat to coat up the pan. And that'll be good. Now that this has been heated up for a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and dump in my washed rice. Now that the rice is in there, we're gonna go ahead and salt it. I do not measure how much salt I put, I just pour. But essentially what I do is a light sprinkle all the way across and then halfway through. And that's how I measure how much salt to put. This has worked really well for me because the bigger the pot, the more rice that you're using, so then the more salt you'll need. So this tends to be my form of measurement. And as you can hear that sizzling, that's great. Mix the rice, and it's just gonna lightly toast while it's in here. An optional thing for you to do is to boil water before pouring it to cook the rice, or you don't have to boil it, you can if you want to. I personally, if I remember to boil it, I'll boil it, but if I don't, then I don't care. Just for today, I, I'm for the sake of today, I'm just not gonna boil it, because I don't feel like it. Also, can we like look at my turmeric stained wooden spoon? Why does that happen? But whatever, turmeric is turmeric. I'm gonna let this rice sit for a little bit and toast for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna put the lid on. And now for the stew, we're gonna use one head of an onion. I This is optional, that's why I didn't include it, but you can go ahead and use this. If you have an onion on hand, go ahead and use this. If you don't, do not, that's totally fine. And then another thing that I forgot that the recipe uses is minced garlic. You can go ahead and actually get this from the dollar store. I got mine from Aldi, but the dollar store does have a big jar of this for $1.25. So if you would like to go ahead and pick one of these up from the dollar store, feel free to do so. If not, if you have a head of garlic at home, that would be great. 
but the garlic and the onion just essentially just adds like a richness to the recipe but if you don't have these and you just have like garlic powder and onion powder you could totally use those as well it would taste pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and dice this up and same that i did for the rice i coated the bottom of the pan with oil and i am going to heat this up lightly while i dice up my onion here's my little onion i'm gonna i always cut off the ends and i peel and then cut off the end and i peel and then i chop right in the middle to kind of get rid of the onion part and i'm just gonna peel the first layer of the onion off to get rid of basically the peel and i just feel like this works best because it's the easiest in my opinion and you don't actually have to waste this you don't have to throw it in the trash you can actually save it for homemade um vegetable broth so i'm gonna cut the onion in half now that i've cut it in half this one cut a little bit messy well we're gonna slice it as you guys can see straight horizontally i believe this is and then we're gonna i took the onion i diced it this way now i'm gonna turn it so that i can dice it and once I get a little bit closer, I'm gonna flip to dice. I'm gonna do the same thing. Turn, dice. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect because it is a stew. Oh my God, my eyes are burning, but so go ahead and pour it in there. All, all in there. And right now we have, oh my God, my eyes are literally, my eyes are burning. Now we have the rice, right? You hear it toasted? Well, we're gonna go ahead and stir it. It's toasting a little bit. It's nice. You'll feel it. It'll be like a little bit rough and it, like it'll feel like it's toasted. Clear out all of the edges, scrape out the bottom. For every cup of rice, you're gonna do about a cup and a quarter of water. It depends how mushy you like your rice. I don't really like my rice that mushy, so I did one cup of rice, and you see I just added a cup of water, and that's not enough water because it has to coat the entire top. So I'm gonna add in more water. The idea is to measure from the cup that you used. So we're gonna pour in more water. You see how when I mix the rice, we have to mix the rice all together so it's nicely coated. You see how when I mix the rice, it's like, there's at least about that much water in there. That's perfect because that means my rice is going to cook, but it's not going to be too mushy. And that's essentially what you're measuring for. That's what you want. If I were to add more water, then my rice would be mushier and it wouldn't be that fluffy rice that you look for in traditional Middle Eastern dishes. Put the lid on and I'm going to actually leave the heat like this and then I might turn it down in a few few minutes now we got this i'm gonna turn up the heat and we're going to allow this to wilt a little bit i'm going to add a little bit of salt in the meantime the salt is not to taste the salt is actually just to sweat out the onions so i added the salt and now my onions are gonna start sweating I'm going to put the lid on and then just let them sweat a little bit. Once the onions look like this, which should literally take about 30 seconds, you're going to take about like that much of a teaspoon of a garlic and you're going to mix it all together. And essentially, you just kind of want these to get each other's flavor. And as you can see, the bottom of my pan is kind of burning. So I'm going to turn down the heat a bit. One thing that I do that you guys might think is weird, but I do actually wash the top of these cans before I open them because there might be some dirt and I don't want that dirt to get inside of my food. I open the jars. I'm going to go rinse out the green beans because I just don't want, you know, I just want to rinse them. I'm going to rinse my second can of green beans. 
and give them that nice little rinse. What's nice about this is that they're already cooked, so cooking shouldn't take that long. Once they are nice and rinsed, I'm gonna go ahead and dump them in here. Go ahead and add my can of tomato sauce. And you see all of this in there? I'm just gonna add some water in there, that's it. Now for this part I actually do add filtered water and I'm just gonna go ahead and shake in all of the access from the sides because I can't shake it, it's not a jar, it's a can. So I took everything from the sides. As you guys can see, there's more tomato size, so I'm gonna add it in there to just make it more water because remember, this is a stew. Now we're gonna combine all of these ingredients. And as I told you, you only needed one can because this right now is actually too thick. So we're gonna go ahead and add more water. So honestly, I do everything based off of looks, so that's why I'm adding water. And that right there makes it more of a stew because, again, I want it to be more watery than a thick. This isn't like a chili or anything. And depending on how many people you are feeding, you can actually make this more watery or less watery because I have so many green bees. So I kind of, you know, I want to stretch this. I want to see how many people I can feed with this. So I'm actually going to make it more watery and honestly this is the consistency right consistency right here that we're looking for for this stew one thing that i want to add is that when you're cooking your rice it's going to start bubbling and all of that don't worry leave the lid on just turn down your heat a little bit because that means the water has started to bubble and your rice essentially looks like that which means it's almost done cooking. And as you guys can tell, rice literally takes 10 minutes. There's no reason to get the 90 second rice or the minute rice, I think they call it. Yeah, the minute rice, the instant rice. This takes less than 10 minutes to make. Do you hear that? It sounds like it's almost done with the water. So what I do is I'm gonna put my spoon in and I'm gonna like wiggle wiggle. And I'm gonna look at the bottom. I can't really show you guys because it's gonna steam up. That little brief glimpse is that there's no water at the bottom. So that's perfect. That means I'm actually going to turn this off and that my rice is cooked. But we're not gonna mix this yet. We're gonna leave it for five minutes to just sit there and cook in its steam. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and season this. So what I'm gonna season it with is half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of paprika, and also half a teaspoon of salt. Mind you, it is good to go in with less than more. So if you feel like half a teaspoon might be too big for your pot, or half a teaspoon might be too little for your pot, go ahead and add more because the salt essentially is just a taste. I also keep my minced garlic on standby if I feel like it might need a little bit more garlic. This is not a garlic heavy dish, but we all know that a little bit of garlic does add a little bit of flavor. Mind you, this is not a heaping teaspoon, half a teaspoon, so half a teaspoon in and another half a teaspoon in and a little less than half a teaspoon of salt because it's always better to have less salt than more salt now we're gonna go ahead and mix this all in and we're just gonna leave it to start to boil once you see this boiling then you can start tasting it because i feel like the flavors when they mix in and when they heat up together release a stronger flavor than when it's cold like this so we're just gonna leave this for a few minutes and yeah what i love about this recipe is that i'm able to feed three people with a cup of rice that i made and now i have rice for next time and for any other meals that i choose to make and that's so great i love that because at the end of the day the dollar 25 that i spent i can stretch it across meals to come and that dollar 25 and i know some people measure like by servings but i don't do that the bag was a dollar 25 i only used a little bit of it and now I get to stretch that $1.25 for meals to come. Now, I would argue there is an art to mixing rice. So I'm going to show you, as I am the artist, how to mix this rice. So you're going to shove your spoon all the way to the bottom. You hear that? It means I got to the bottom. 
and then I'm going to go around and lift everything on the sides. You see how I'm getting the bottom clean like that? And then I'm gonna fold it, and then I'm gonna brush it to the side. I'm gonna do the same thing around the edges, go back, fold, lift up. And we're gonna do the same thing around, lift up and fold. This allows my rice to let out the steam that is inside of it and just cook even more. And it's nice and it's delicious and it's yummy. You see that steam? That's why we're gonna allow this rice to rest for another five minutes. Do not underestimate the power of steam cooking. Now, let's check out over here on our stew. Do you see that? Do you see how it's starting to bubble up? Now that it's starting to bubble up, I'm gonna use this spoon because I'm, gonna about, I'm about to serve it soon. So I'm mixing it all up and I'm actually gonna try it and see how I like the taste. So what we made today is called shorbet fasolia and fasolia is green bean in a Syrian and It's so good and it's good for you and it's a comfort food it what my parents used to make it all the time when I was a kid It's such an easy go-to recipe and meal you can add beef to this But that just takes a lot longer, but you would add beef chunks to this recipe. I will find somebody who has the recipe with beef chunks. If you are interested in learning how to make more Assyrian dishes, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel at Assyrian Kitchens because she makes all the traditional Assyrian dishes and actually has really great recipes. I've recreated some of hers and they're really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this. Oh, oh, delicious. Yeah, I don't feel like I have to add anything to it. In my opinion, it tastes delicious. And I'm gonna leave my seasonings as is. Remember, you can add more if you would like. It's all taste preference. Wow, I'm like impressed. I've impressed myself with this one. It's so good. One thing that I would like to add is between using French style green beans or regular cut green beans. Now the preference is up to you because personally, we use both. French style green beans means that the green bean is cut in half and it's really just made very thinly, like almost julienne, right? Yeah, that's how thin they are. And I like it because I feel like it creates more if you really like the taste of the green beans and you like the abundancy of the green beans with the rice. But then you can also use regular cut green beans and these allow for more chunks. So they're a little bit more chewy. Again, up to you what you would like. Some days I feel like having them French style. Sometimes I feel like having them just traditionally cut. It depends on you. Choose, uh, if you're gonna make this meal for your first time, I would recommend doing this meal twice and using both types and see which one you prefer better. We're gonna go ahead and try the rice. Here's, here's my little pour of rice. Assyrians all the time, no matter how many times we make rice, we always have to taste test our rice because sometimes we'll be like, ooh, our rice came out a little pacha, which means that it was lacking salt. Or they'll say, which means, ooh, my rice came out a little salty. So, and anytime we make good rice, we're always so proud of ourselves. Like not every single one of our meals requires we have rice with it. Okay, this rice is interesting because it requires more water than what I'm used to. So it still has a little bit of a crunch, but not too bad, like I could still eat up. However, next time if I were to make this meal with this rice that I use, I would add more water to give it more of that soft, softer rice texture, but every rice brand that you buy will be slightly different in how it cooks. So with this rice brand, it looks like it needs more water than the rice that I, the rice brand that I typically cook with. But it looks like dinner is done, guys. And that took less than a half hour. If anything, it took longer because I was recording it, all of this. But if you're just making it chop, 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 super easy. Because as you guys can see, my stew is boiling now. It's all nice and boiled up, which means 
she is cooked and since the green beans were in the can they were already cooked but this meal is done now we're just gonna pack her on up with just the rice i was able to fill up three of the glad to go tupperwares first i put a bed of rice and now we're gonna put the shurba on top give it a nice little mix and you see all of those green beans in there. That's what I like. I like this to be a green bean heavy stew. You can also choose for it not to be green bean heavy. Everyone makes this dish different. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a bit of it on top. I'm gonna coat all of it. And I'm just gonna eyeball how much stew I think should go in there. I think this is good enough because you're gonna mix it all together. I'm gonna do it for all three of them and I'm gonna pack them up. So I went ahead and did a hefty pour for all three. As you can see, this is a really hefty pour. You do not need to pour this much, but I did because I just think it tastes that good. So I did a hefty pour for all three of them and get this, I still have leftovers. I could feed another person with this and they would be full, they would be satisfied, they would be happy. Look at how much leftover there is. That's a lot. That could be another serving for one or two people. And mind you, I could also stretch it out for five people because I did hefty pours for every single person. I hope you guys really enjoyed cooking with me on this Dollar Tree find. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was a little nervous at first, like, what am I going to make with this dollar store recipe? Like, I literally didn't know what to make because I felt a little hindered that there wasn't a lot of meat options at the dollar store. There was actually no meat options. They did have a sausage one, but that had pork in it. And I'm a Syrian, I'm Christian, I can eat pork, but I don't like it. I don't like the taste of it. So I did not want to include the sausages. Also, the sausages weren't that healthy. They had a lot of like chemicals in them. So I was like, what am I going to make? So. I'm glad I made this. Now I'm gonna package this all up and I'm gonna put it in my little bag, I'm so excited. I'm gonna take it to the studio and I'm gonna have the guys taste this and see what they think of it. And then I will get you guys their reaction and then I will tell them it was all only dollar store ingredients because you can make a full home cooked meal, a traditional Assyrian recipe from the dollar store, feed so many people for less than $5. I'm so here for that. Okay, here's Luke. Hi. And we've got the food. Ooh. All right, do you want a big spoon or a little spoon? I want a little spoon. I'm in the little spoon gang. Thank Me too. Thank you very much. Okay, he's gonna try it, guys. Let's let's see what he... Mm. It's horrible. Oh my well, gosh. It's really good. <laughs> it's delicious. Thank you so much. Wait, do you actually think it tastes good? Mm-hmm. Okay. What if I told you this was all stuff from the Dollar Tree? I wouldn't believe you. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Everything is from the Dollar Tree, from the rice, to the green beans, mm. to the tomato sauce. It's actually really good. The only thing I would need to add is a little bit of salt. Oh, you think it needs more salt? Well, I'm a salt person. That's true, he does like his stuff more salty and sweet, oh my gosh. Mm. That's why I took a strawberry lemon pot. <laughs> Next, we're gonna get our Amon's reaction. I told you guys, like, this food tastes so good, and using only Dollar Tree items is just incredible. And because I don't see because Dollar Tree is cheap, because you could probably find these at a lower price at a grocery store. However, the Dollar Tree is accessible and does allow for accessibility. So if you try this recipe out, let me know. We're gonna Scary. Scary. What? That was like no reaction. Oh. No. Scared shitless on the inside. Damn. I'm actually not. Did you get a little scared? A little bit. Did your heart palpitate? No. Did your palms sweat at all? Did you sweating? Did, oh, breath. did your knees feel like spaghetti? No, not quite. Okay. Well, that was a failed attempt at trying to scare him. So. I heard you No, you didn't. I believe him. No, he's smiling. Look at him. He's smiling. Didn't hear he didn't hear us. We were so quiet. Like why? Yeah, why would that happen? I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, here we have Armand. He's gonna try the food. Green beans. Looks good. It's also shorba. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna mix that, I think, up. 
Yeah. He I mixes did. it all up. I had a, I had a mid lunch, to say the least. Are you excited for a dinner? Yes. That's good. You like it? I love it. Babe. Babe. Would you believe me if I if I told you I made all of this from dollar store ingredients? Really? Yeah. Like dead ass. Like dead ass. The rice is from the dollar store. The green beans are from the dollar store, and the tomato sauce is from the Did dollar store. Did you look at nutrition facts before you bought everything? Everything was 100% natural, yes. That's good. Yep. Dollar Tree dinners. I made the rice, like it's like raw rice. Mm-hmm. Like the regular rice we buy. Yeah, it looks different than the regular rice you make. Yeah, but it's still good, la. Yeah, it tastes delicious. Hey. Dollar store dinners. Dollar store dinners, guys, and that's what I call a success. How much did you spend on this dinner? Buy a lot. Yeah, well, yeah, five bucks. Isn't that cool? Yeah, the dinner was only five bucks, and I satisfied both Luke, myself, and Armand. So that just goes to show that dollar store dinners can be both good and healthy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until the next one, I hope to see you guys all back on my channel. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye, everyone. See you next time. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha